Hey, today we're doing a transmission service on a Ford Mondeo 2010 model and it's got the six speed DCT transmission, the dual clutch transmission in it. So what we're going to do to begin with is remove this filter here. Um, the filler plug's actually underneath, underneath this. So we'll just remove that. Pop this air intake hose off, and we've taken the plug out. You just slide that little jigger out, and it just pops out. And now I need two hands just to pull that up. That'll just that's just pressed into some rubber um, there, so we can pull that out. And you can see the filler plug just there. Grab the torch. Right there. Now if you have a look under here, and there is the external filter. Um, it's the inline filter that goes through, or the cooling lines go through. There is a filter in the transmission, but you've got to pull the whole thing apart to, to replace that one. So we're just going to replace that little cartridge filter there today. And that's an 8mm uh, Allen key head for that plug there. Now we've got this whopping big stone guard to take off. Now just 10mm bolts. Just undo that. We'll m remove that just so we can gain access to the drain plugs and also where the filter is. We've got the stone guard off and now we're going to just take off these two drain plugs. Just one at the rear and one at the front. And they're 8 mil. Just give it a bit of a wire brush and a blowout before you pull it out as well. Before you take these plugs out, just an important warning, do not take these off. These are detent bolts holding something inside the transmission. So if you take these wrong ones off, you can get into strife. You might have to pull the transmission out and apart to get that back together. So make sure you just take these two out here to drain the fluid level. And here's a diagram. It shows the filter and the external canister and where the fill mark is. The fill plug's at the top and then towards the rear of the transmission, just bef behind where, where the axle goes in, that's where the little um, level check plug is. Now what I like to do when it stops draining there is take that little plug off. You can see it, it's a little bit hard to see through there. But it's just behind the axle there. And I take that plug off and I just gently blow some air into the hole and there'll be any muck that's accumulated around that drain plug hole will um, just blow out as well. It'll, you'll just get a little bit extra muck out of it, that's all. Plug off, I'll just use a 9 inch extension bar. A little bit hard to see because of this cross member there. And I've just unloosened it. Now when you're going to blow 
through that hole, make sure the top plug's still in place, otherwise it's gonna, you're gonna lose pressure through that filler plug. You want all the pressure to be coming through, through these drain plugs. Make sure your compressor nozzle's nice and clean. And I'm just gonna poke it up into that hole and give it a bit of a blowout. Here we go. You can see it's bugger all, but there is some darker oil coming out of it. Just make sure your plugs are nice and clean. Now, ideally, it would be a good idea to have a magnet on these when you put them in. If you were putting a plug in there, you want to make sure you get a screwdriver and just make sure that the plug isn't going to be hitting anything. And you can see, this one's only got about that much room. You can see that the it's about double the length of the, the thread. The thread's, I think, 12 mil on this. So if you were to put a, a magnet in with a plug like this one, um, that thread's probably a little bit too long. So you want to make sure it's just 12 mil and the magnet not to be sticking out at all. Another thing you could do is just stick the stick a magnet on the outside of the plug because you got that stone guard there it's not going to get bumped off or contaminated and that will actually magnetize that plug a little bit until until you're able to pull that plug out or do the service on it and then install a magnet on the plug tighten those up Tighten these up to 45 newton meter. Another transmission, you can see the little mechatronic cover there. And the filter's just over here. So we're going to give it a bit of a blowout. Just take that little external um, cover out, and I think that bolt's oh, 30 mil. I think it is. It is 30 mil. You just use a 30 mil socket. You might need to get a little swivel for it. And once you loosen it about halfway, it's a good idea to just give it another blow out. Definitely don't want any muck getting in there. There we go. filter there you can see it's pretty grimy the the new one there um, I believe you can buy just the filter cartridge on its own but because these these little housings are plastic and there is pressure in there going circulating through that what can happen is that um, these plastic housings split over time so for that reason, I like to replace the whole thing. It's a little bit dearer, but you got safety, peace of mind. Plastic will harden and go brittle over time as well, so the choice is yours. But we're going to replace the, the whole thing. You'll just make sure you don't forget the O-ring. The O-ring comes in the kit, or should come in the kit. And uh, just do a 
visual comparison, make sure everything looks as it should, make sure there's no little bits of plastic caught in there. I've come across that a number of times where there's little uh, factory faults in it. And the filter, make sure the filter goes in the right way. I'm going to be uh, filling it with the Tritec DSG or DCT, same thing, dual clutch transmission or the dual shift gearbox, same sort of thing. And these all handle the, the Ford um, equivalent fluid. So it's important, very important to have the right fluid for these. It's quite expensive, so just be careful when you're filling it as well. I pre pre filled a little filter there when, before I put it on. Just be aware that if you fill this up before you put the filter in, it's going to overflow. So allow for the filter as well. Okay, I've filled that with oil. It's got the filter in it. Now, just a matter of holding it as straight as you can. Spill a little bit. And just get it started on the... Just remember that uh, you can break that external housing quite easily, so don't over tighten it. But I'm just going to give it a bit of a wipe, wipe all that um, spilt oil and I, everything I've spilt on that cross member, and we're ready to fill it now. Put the oil level plug back in just till I fill it and start it. Now I like to always measure how much oil came out. And you can see that's on about 6.2 centimetres. So that's 6.2 litres came out of this transmission. Um, with them, you've got to actually overfill it a little bit. Because the oil's so expensive, you don't want to overfill it by too much. But I'll put probably about 6.4 litres in it, and then I'll be able to just test that oil level after I've started a bit and also we've got to expect about 200 mil to actually come out of it. The DSG fluid has a distinctive smell and it's got the clear colour sort of like a yellowy tinge to it. So our pump here is uh, one pump or oh, 10 pumps per litre so we're putting in about 6.4 litres, so 64 pumps. Okay, we've got our oil in. Just put that plug back on. I have, I know I've overfilled it a little bit. These usually take about 6 litres. And it's important, like everything, to not overfill it or underfill it. With these, you keep the temperature between... 35 and 45 degrees Celsius. If it's over that, you've got to let it cool down before you check the oil level because the oil expands as it warms up, so it's important to have it at that right temp uh, right level. We're already at about, we haven't even started it, it's a pretty warm day here, 39 degrees. So we're just going to hop in it, start it up, go through the gears, select it, all the gears for about 10-15 seconds, go right through from park all the way down and back up two or three times and then we turn the motor off and then we're going to just hop underneath and just make sure that um, out of that level plug it's just trickling out. All that air filter off for the moment just in case I need to top it up a bit more. And 
we're just going to select all the gears slowly. Okay, back in a park, and we can turn it off. And the temperature's still around 40, so that's ideal to test it at. It's just coming out a little bit, and we expected that, because we did overfill it a bit. So when that just starts to trickle, I'm just going to quickly put that plug back in. And there's a nice thin stream there, it's just starting to trickle now. I'm going to put that plug back in. And I've tightened that plug up and it's a good idea to just double check and triple check that you've done these up and also the filter. Just going to give it all a little bit of a wipe down, make sure there's no oil and we can put that uh, stone guard back on. Stone guard's back on, just have a check around, make sure we haven't forgotten anything. Um, these bolts that go into the chassis there for the stone guard, don't over tighten them, they only go into a plastic so you don't have to tighten them up that high. And now we're going to go for a test run. Just make sure you've tightened up your plug there and the filter just pushes into these little rubber holes there and here. Don't forget to tighten up that and put the plug back in, in there as well and put the guard back on the battery. So we'll do that and take it for a test run. This bit here just pushes into there. That, that rubber's actually just come out, so I'll put that back in, in a little bracket. There we go. Fit in a little bit easier. And these little lugs just push into that rubber. the plugs out of the way. There we go, just back from test run and I've just got to put a put that little tie down strap back on that cable just so it doesn't wriggle around. Anyway, I hope that's helped uh, you be able to do a service on your own DCT or DSG transmission. Thank you for watching.